Let's make a simple vimrc file. Uh, to start, or start off, we'll show that we don't have a vimrc file yet. And then let's just make a simple file. We'll make a Python script just to have a little something real to show. Just a function, then we'll call the function, and that's good enough for an example. All right, uh, when I'm using vim, I like to have line numbers turned on. So let's set nu, which turns on line numbers. And I also like the slate color scheme, so let's enable the slate color scheme as well. And I'm happy, I like the way that looks. So just for fun, let's get out of here and run our Python script, and we see that it runs. Great. So if we wanted to go back in and make some changes, we'd open it up, and the first thing we'd see is we lost our changes, which is pretty annoying. So let's uh, make a vimrc file. So all we did is enter in here the same commands that we would run at the uh, vim you know, command line, but if we put them in the .vimrc file, they take effect every time. So let's close this and open up a file again. And here we see, got line numbers, and we have the slate theme. So one thing that's annoying here is having to close the file each time to open up the vimrc, which you don't really have to do. So if you use the edit command, or you can shorten it to E, you can open up another file, another buffer, and have multiple open simultaneously, which is nice. So just to demo that, let's remove the line numbers. So we'll set no NU, so no line numbers. Then if we run colon BP for buffer previous, we can pop over to the other file. Now, it didn't take effect because when we started Vim, the, what was in effect in the VimRC was turning on line numbers. So we need to resource our VimRC. So let's source our VimRC, and we see it goes away. And that's just for demo. I really prefer line numbers, so let's turn them back on. Source it. Good. All right, now typing BP all the time is kind of annoying. So let's go back to our VimRC, and let's map the F2 key to previous. So once we source it, that takes effect, and we can use F2 to toggle back and forth. So let's demo that back and forth. All right. And just for completeness, in addition to BP for previous, there's BN for next. So we can map F3 to be next and pre be previous, which is cool. Now our problem is that we have to run the source command every time. So let's solve that by using F5, because F5 is generally used as a refresh key. So if we map F5 to the source command, that will, once we source it, that takes effect. So great, and we'll demo that in a second. So let's search for hello. And you see it shows hello, and you can press N to jump around to different matches, but it's not highlighted, and that's one thing that Vim does which makes it easier in a large block of text to find what you're looking for. So let's do something about that. We'll pop over here, and we'll just set the option HL search. So now, if we hit F5 to refresh, we'll see that hello is highlighted everywhere. And once you're done, you want the highlighting to go away. And what I used to always do is I would just search for something I knew wasn't in the document, which gives you a little error that doesn't mean anything, and it gets rid of the highlighting. But we can do something a little better here. So let's pop over. And in a vimrc, if you start a line with a double quote, that's a comment. So because this is a little bit obscure, this command isn't 100% obvious what it does just by reading it. We have a nice little comment that explains it. So we'll press F5. Let's search for hello again. All right, and then Control L, and it goes away. And that's it for this. I like to keep these short, but my email address is milocast at gmail.com. If you have questions, ideas for topics you want to see in future screencasts, let me know.